Overnight, some of us could catch a glimpse of the northern lights. A solar storm could trigger the auroras farther south than we've seen in nearly 20 years. And our forecast is going to cooperate. Meteorologist Kat Campbell says it should be clear enough to see it. Music to my ears and music to yours as well. NASA Ambassador Tony Rice, thank you so much for being here to talk about this with us. It's exciting. You and I spoke yesterday. Mm -hmm. At the time, you were saying, oh, we might be able to see a little bit of a hazy green off in the distance. What are you expecting now? Because the forecast changes. A lot has changed. And uh, you know, forecasting the weather here on Earth is pretty challenging. It's even more challenging in space. It's because we have so little assets out there. That's changing a lot, we're putting more uh, missions up there. But since we talked yesterday, the arrival is, is happening a little bit earlier for that geomagnetic storm. And it looks like it's gonna be a lot stronger. We've been sitting in the Weather Center watching some of the metrics that are coming out of Europe and, and the United States as well, and they're off the charts. We've not seen this level of, it's called the planetary index. It measures the amount of energy that's up in the atmosphere, and that's what's exciting those atoms up there and creating those beautiful colors. We're looking right now at a map of the United States, and, and explain to us what we're seeing. It looks like Raleigh is in that possible visible category. So it really comes down to where in the sky you might be able to see things. That very likely visible means that those beautiful colors are going to be directly overhead, thus easier to see. The possibly visible is going to be a little bit lower in the, uh, in the sky, closer to the horizon, and that line down at the very bottom, that's where we were yesterday. That's what we were expecting yesterday, where we'd see just a little bit of greening to the, uh, to the, along the horizon. So things have improved quite a bit. Okay, so when and where is it best to look? And that's the, what remains to be seen. We really don't know yet. Uh, one of the forecasts uh, it's a uh, almost day old forecast at this point it says around 4 a.m. But we're seeing some of this arrive a little bit earlier than we expected. So I'm going to say as soon as those clouds clear out there, which Kat is telling me is going to happen you know, soon after sunset, I would go out and start taking a look. I'm going to be looking all night because this could be pretty interesting and it doesn't happen very often. I imagine the darker the conditions, the better. You know, Absolutely. if you've got a lot of light pollution, it could make things Same a bit Same rule apply here that would apply to meteor showers or whatever. Yep. You want to look in dark skies. You know, I was looking online and seeing that in some areas, in other instances of this, it's had an impact on the power grid. Are we at risk of that here? That's something we really need to worry about here. Uh, there's a protective like donut around the Earth's uh, atmosphere and that keeps uh, uh, normally this kind of energy away. The upper parts of that donut, you know, they're not protecting up there. So uh, where we see those kind of risks to the power grid and things like that, South Africa, up in Northern Europe, but around here in, in Central North Carolina, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, all right, so you heard it from <laughs> Tony Rice. Let's look once the skies start to clear, the, the sky turns dark, and keep your eyes peeled to the skies. All right, thank you.